Alright guys, so today we've got a lot of fun stuff going on. Uh, we're gonna do some more work on the Trekker knife, but again, after I get some orders out. Uh, I've got a little sandblasting to do, and then I've got to put a final bevel on some small little last ditch neckers. On that video that I did a few days ago asking about your input, what types of knives you'd like to see, uh, thank you guys so much. You have come through big time. And just in case you think like uh, I'm not gonna read those comments, um, I've read them all. My wife has gone through all of those comments. She's printed lists of the knives that you guys would like to see. Uh, these are all knife ideas. Like, there's a lot. Like, tons. Let's just, okay, so, a forge knife, axe, sword, dagger, bally song, unsharpened trainer. That's a cool idea. Uh, rescue, cleaver, medieval dagger, ring knife, leather working knife, tanto, throwing knife, k-bar, ulu, hidden tang, hatchet, help, Hawkbill, Nesmuk, Boot Knife, Bayonet, Modern Short Sword. Fantastic ideas you guys have here. Folding Knife and Chef Knives are the most popular. We've also gone through and kind of figured how many comments for each knife that we've received. So we're definitely reading all of your awesome comments as well. You guys had a lot of great video ideas. Different types of metal, how to choose width, size, etc. Stages I went through with my gear. Polished knife scales, budget builds with actual costs tallied up. That's a really cool idea. Heat anodizing, how to make serrations. Knife testing videos, that's that's a really good one. We haven't done any of those. Bolsters, pommels, uh, knives made with mystery slash cheap metals. Well, that sounds like it could be kind of fun. It might be disastrous and slightly a waste of time, but fun nonetheless. So anyways, guys, I thank you so much for this incredible input. If this isn't a game plan for videos, uh, I don't know what is. I've always wished there's a way that I could film inside of the sandblasting cabinet. I thought about putting a GoPro in there, but I just can't afford to wreck a GoPro in case it does get destroyed. But how's this? I could show you before and after. This, that's before sandblasting. <laughs> And this, this is after sandblasting. Right, so some of you guys might remember this little grinding jig I have. I ground the bevel on it that matches the specific bevel I like to use for these little knives. And when I first put the bevel on, I do it before I drill this hole out. So this is a quarter inch hole, forget what that one is. And this is, uh, I don't know, something bigger. Now that I've got that drilled, I want that drilled before heat treat. After heat treat, I like to clean up the bevel. So what to do about this hole? I took my lathe and I machined a little brass adapter here. And what I can do is just pop that in there. It's a really nice, precise fit, and voila. Now I'm back to being able to use this jig to finish off these bevels.
We've got these guys cleaned up in there, and I'll show you quickly the belts that I was using to do that. These are J-Flex belts by Klingspor. And they're a scalloped belt. This is a one inch wide. You can run them on a two inch grinder, no problem. The thing I love about these is they've got these wavy edges and that allows them to flex. And each little tiny wave can kind of flex in so they don't dig in and cut into stuff like what we were doing with these. You see, they just leave a really nice finish. There's no hard edges there. Just a really great way to finish up inside radiuses and stuff like that when you want to curve on them. I've tried other brands of these and they do not last nearly as long as the Kling Spores. I think I've tried three other brands and Kling Spores are the only ones that last for any decent amount of time. Uh, the other ones, they'll curve a little bit and I find sometimes I only get one blade and then they'll just snap. I've switched just to doing Kling Spore because they just last so much longer. And that is a super, super slick way to get the inside radius of those little knives. But we're going to put these aside. Let's dig out the tracker. Hang these guys up on our waiting rack. Okie dokie smokey pokey. So the next step of this process, let's grab the scales we're gonna use. And these are camo G10 layered camo. So the next part here will be to drill out the holes. One person had suggested moving this up and leaving this as a lanyard hole. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. You know what, I don't like lanyard holes that aren't finished, that don't have a tube in them. Get out of here you stupid fly. Uh, since I'm not going to be gluing these on, I think I'm going to leave that like that. If you ever wanted a type of retention hole for chopping, this little guy could do the job. You could pull a loop on there, wrap it around your wrist. But I think we're just going to leave this as it is. Alright, so I think the way we're going to have to do this, none of this is the right way necessarily, but because I've already drilled these holes, what I'm going to do um, is I'll drill through one of these at a time. I'll drill it through with the number 29, which was the tap drill size for these 832 screws that we're using. I'm just going to use uh, silver ones for my fit up. And then I'll drill one hole and I'll take it and I'll counter bore it so that the head of the screw sits flush. That way I can actually bolt the scale to it while I drill my next hole to keep these all in proper alignment. It's a bit of a slower way about it, but I think this is going to be the most accurate. Again, if, had I been uh, planning on doing these types of scales from the beginning, before I enlarge these holes, I would have uh, drilled all my, my scales up, but this is kind of a, a bit of a uh, salvage project, you could say. Try to bring this knife back from being a cord wrapped blade. No, no. What is wrong with this picture? Are you kidding me? That is what you call carelessness. Oh my word, what an epic fail. Look at that, that, that is a rookie mistake. I, I just wasn't paying enough attention when I drilled and this metal is sticking just proud of that. Well, let me, let me think about this for a moment. Long story short, the right way to do this is just to cut out a new scale. I could just trim that a bit, but I don't want to. Like, I like the shape of this knife, and I don't want to have to just take a little bit of that off. That, that to me, isn't okay, so. Maybe we'll put up a time lapse, and you could enjoy a little time lapse action, starting now. Scales drilled out and uh, it's just mark on there so I don't ever confuse them accidentally. Almost had another panic attack. The piece of G10 that I had left over wasn't big enough like to square it off so I had to set it diagonally on there. That's why it's shaped all kind of cattywampus like that. Interestingly enough, uh, that video where I asked you guys for your input, what knives you'd like to see built, uh, some of you actually commented, you know what, we want to see you make your mistakes and we want to learn from your mistakes. So <laughs> there you go. There's one of my mistakes. I hope you enjoyed it. That was a rookie mistake. All right, so the next step of the process, we're gonna counterbore uh, this side of the scales so that uh, these screw heads will sit flush. I'm gonna use a stopping collar on my drill press so you can kind of uh, lock this in and that way you can stop at a certain depth. So I'll have to fiddle around a little bit and kind of figure the right depth and then I'll just set this up. 
That way we can get them all the same without, a lot of times when you're counter boring with a drill bit, which I'm gonna do, which is maybe not the right way to do it, but whatever. You gotta be careful, because a lot of times when you're counter boring with a drill bit in something like G10 or wood or whatever, sometimes it'll just grab, just boom, pop a through hole there. So let's check out the progress we're making on this. We've got these scales roughed out, uh, pretty much matching the knife there. Uh, the one thing I'm gonna change is I'm not entirely crazy about the way that this looks, so I've actually kind of drawn a little sharpie here. I think I'm gonna round this off just a little bit more. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow, and then we'll also start texturing. I'm gonna have to shorten these screws down a little bit because they're kind of they're bumping into each other inside those spacers. And then also, when it's all said and done, I'm gonna use black screws for this. And the one thing I was thinking about is doing like an acid stone wash on this blade. The one thing with bolt-on scales that's kind of nice is I can actually wait until uh, the scales are done and at that point make the decision. Uh, let me know what your thoughts. Do you think this thing would be great as an acid stone wash knife or just leave it as it is? You can't really see what it's like right here, but uh, it's got a neat texture on it and then clean bevels, so I'm not entirely sure what we're gonna do. It feels way better with scales on there even though they're all hard and sharp. But we're gonna get this thing textured up tomorrow, get a little comfortable. It's like the never ending project that just keeps going on and on and on. Once again guys, a massive thank you for all these wonderful knife build ideas. I think I really wanna build all these knives that you guys have suggested. There's such awesome ideas here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. This circle right here, that will subscribe. All you have to do is press that and ba-boom, you're in and then I'm gonna leave a couple videos over here for you so you can check those out thank you so much for watching guys cheers